had the story. Now it's time for our scripture reading. If you turn in your Bibles to the book of Acts. Acts is an interesting book. It tells what was going on in the new Christian church. Chapter 19, verse 15. Paul had some very interesting things that happened to him. And this is from one of the stories. Acts 19, verse 15. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? If you'd like to sing the chorus, uh, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Can you stand and sing tonight? All right. <laughs> Verse 8. 
And when he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things according to the kingdom of God. Is that what we ought to be focused on? Amen. I think so. All right. So let's, let's not get stuck in little ditches, okay? But when the divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years. Two years. So that all that which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. Is that beautiful? And God wrote special, wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out from them. Do you hear that? This man was so blessed that articles that were touched by him were healing people. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? Hmm. Let us have that kind of relationship with Jesus Christ. And we love one another so much that we want to see them healed from their diseases. Correct? So that the form of, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs and aprons. I already read this, but I'm going to do it again. And the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out from them. Praise the Lord. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, Exodus, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus. But they had evil spirits. Did you hear that? Saying, we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. Hmm. You hear that? Whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and, a, and chief of the priests, which did, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <coughs> Naked and wounded. They thought they were doing the work of God, didn't they? These evil spirits knew Paul, right? And they knew Jesus. But they didn't know these guys, did they? What does that tell you? Where is your connection? Right? The connection has to be with Jesus. In this world, it matters who you know. And in the world to come, it matters who you know. Amen. I'm going to continue down here. And in verse 17 it says, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling in Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that became believed came and confused. And many that believed came and confused and showed their deeds. Confessed. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, confessed. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it fifty thousand pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. God can work in all things, can he not? Even the evil things that come about, God uses for the glory of his good to those who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? Okay, let us turn to John. John chapter 1.
Y'all there? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. You hear that? There was a man who was sent from God. Okay? Let us turn over to John 5. And I want to begin in verse 30. You all get there to say amen. Amen. This is Jesus speaking. The words were read, correct? I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek what? Uh, Not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. So where is Jesus' focus? On God the Father, right? And that's where he gets his marching orders, correct? Hmm. Okay, let us continue on. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Ye sent unto John, and he bear witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man, but these things I say that he, ye might be saved. He was a burning and a shining light, and ye were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. So if we take John 1, 6 and that part of John 5, 30, you, see, you can say there was a man sent of God whose name was John, right? He was a burning and a shining light. Life. Correct? Okay. What was John's job? John the Baptist. To prepare the way of the Lord. And who are today Seventh day Adventists? Are they not the Johns? Are, are we not supposed to be preparing the way for Jesus to come back? Then who are we? Where is our focus? What are we doing? Because if we're stuck looking at each other, I think we've missed the boat. Right? What did Jesus say he was looking at? He was looking at the Father. Right? Speaking and doing the will of the Father. And our job in turn is to be speaking and doing the will of Jesus. Correct? Yes. This might cut out. You want me to just hold the other one? Some, we got some problems with this for some reason. I don't know why. You want to kill it because now it's working? <laughs> I don't want to blow everybody's ear up. <laughs> Thank you. And, and, and I ask you guys to forgive me for my little rant in the beginning because I, I just, I cannot, I cannot be fake, okay? If I get something in my head, it's got to come out. Or I feel like I'm a phony, okay? And I just can't be that person. So, um, whatever it is, it is. And I love you guys and I'm probably going to make mistakes and you're probably going to make mistakes, but I love you anyway. And I hope you love me anyway. So, um, so our job is the same job that John had. Because if we're going to prepare the way, we got to be looking to Jesus. Right? And if I'm looking to Jesus, then I know who I am, don't I? Because I'm going to reflect him. I'm going to become like him. You know, if a guy has a problem smoking, right, and he's a smoker, and he's trying to put down cigarettes. If he's like, oh, it's cigarettes, I gotta put them down. You know what he's, he's never gonna put them down when he's thinking about the cigarettes, right? When he's looking at the cigarettes, concentrating on them. But if he's concentrating on Jesus, right? What's gonna happen? He's walking with Jesus, the cigarettes are gonna fall off. Why are they gonna fall off? Because Jesus doesn't smoke, right? So why are we trying to beat everybody up? 
Let Jesus take care of the problem. If we get people to fall in love with Jesus, we're not going to have any problems. No problems. We're going to go home. That's what we're going to do. And, and, and I'm afraid that maybe I don't want to go home as much as I should. Maybe I'm comfortable here. Maybe I like it here. I don't know. Have you guys asked yourself that question? I don't know. I really don't know. I, I know I, my kids are a mess. And if Jesus came today, it'd be terrible. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Ah, let's turn to uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 3. I hope this isn't too heavy on you guys, because this is really a simple message. It's very simple. But, um, you know, you think about it. Who, who did Jesus pick to do this work? Right? He didn't pick guys that were, you know, super educated, that went through all the schools and had doctrines and all these letters and stuff behind their name. Um, he picked people like John. There was a man sent of God. You hear that? There's where the qualification comes from. Not from the world. It comes from God. Okay? And it may come in the most unlikely packages you could ever imagine. Because if you got this stuff in your head that you think everything's supposed to happen a certain way, and it's supposed to be this, and it's supposed to be a guy that's slim, and he's whatever, and he's dark-skinned, or whatever, and it's not, then you're going to miss the boat. God can use anything or anybody. He said he could make the rocks talk. Correct? So why do we limit God? We should not limit God in any way. We should be open to his word and let him speak. All right, Matthew 3. I want to begin in verse 5. Matthew, Matthew 3. You know what? I'm going to start in verse 1. Let's start in verse 1. You ready? In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea. What was his qualification? There was a man sent of God, right? And what did, what did John 5.35 say? He was a burning and shining light. Okay, don't forget that. And saying, repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Brothers and sisters, if that is not our message, then I don't know what is. I'm going to continue in verse 4. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and a leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locusts and wild honey. Do you think he might have looked a little strange? <laughs> I think he might have looked a little strange. Even in their time. We should not judge a book by its cover. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region round about Jordan. And were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Why did John have such a successful ministry? Why? He was genuine. He was genuine? Good. Anybody else? God called him. He was a man sent of God. He had an eye for his mission. Yes. Yes. John didn't have the worldly scholarships, right? Why such a harvest of souls? Why? Why do people listen to him? From the Holy Spirit from the womb. The Holy Spirit from the womb. He was sent of God. Was it 
because of the many long years of successful ministry? I don't think so. Thousands flocked to him and were converted. Thousands. Because he was sent of God. Let us go to Jesus' testimony. Let's go to John. Let's go back to John. I want to go back to John 5 and 30. We're just going to scroll down through a couple of these um, texts that I've written down here. I want to read this one again because I want you guys to grasp the fact that everything Jesus did, he did by the Father. Okay? John 5 and 30, I can of my own self, what does he say? Do nothing. Do nothing. This is Jesus, brothers and sisters. This is the author and finisher of our faith. He said, his words, not mine, I can of my own self do nothing. And then the next says, as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Amen? All right, we're going to scroll down through a few more of these. So let's go to John 7 and verse 16. You ready? John 7 and 16. Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. Amen? Mm -hmm. Let's continue. 7 and 29. 7 and 29. And it says, But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Skipping down to verse 33, 7 and 33. Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that what? Sent me. Is Jesus sending you? That's what I want to ask. That's how you'll know who you are. And that's where you get power. And where the Holy Spirit can move you and use you. Isn't this what we really want? This is what we really want. Chapter 8. I want to go down into verse 16. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. We need this connection, brothers and sisters. We have to have this connection. Without this connection, everything we say and do falls flat. We move down to verse 26. I have many things to say and to judge of you. But he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Is he speaking to you today? Are you listening? Let us move down to John 8 and 42. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but what? Are you capturing what we're talking about here today? Let us turn to chapter 9. Chapter 9 and verse 4. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And in verse 5 it says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. What did Jesus say about his people when he left? That you, brothers and sisters, are the light of the world. 
But the only way that we can truly be the light of the world that Jesus has called us to be is if we believe it and we are connected with him. Jesus talks some about judging here, but I've, I haven't heard him talking to me about judging people or you judging people. Did you hear that in there? I don't think so. Let us turn to John chapter 12. In verse 45. Let us, let us start in verse 44. Jesus cried and saith, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but what? On him that sent me. In verse 45, and he that seeth me seeth him what? Let us imagine for a moment if the people that we run into believe they saw Jesus and not us. We were hidden in Christ. And that's who they meet. And that's who they see. Do you think that this world would be flipped upside down with people like that? The Bible says that, that in the Old Testament that the world was turned upside down with 12 men. 12 men. Do you hear me? 12 men. How many people do you think are in here? What if every individual in this church, when somebody saw us, they thought they were talking and seeing Jesus? Do you think this world would be flipped upside down? Do you think we'd go home? Who are you? That's what I want to know. I want to know who are you in Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters. Do you really believe that you're sent of God? Because he believes it. What we need to do is us believe it. And be focused upon him. And not the problems that so easily beset each and every one of us. Because if we're focused on the problems, what do we get? The continued problem. You ever heard of the law of inertia? The law of inertia is that things in motion tend to stay in motion. Things at rest tend to stay at rest. And less acted upon by an outside force. This church is at rest. But there's an outside force, brothers and sisters that wants to act upon it. Who are you in Jesus? Let us turn to John backwards a little bit, 4 and 34. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of him that what? Set me into what? Finish. Finish his work. Is that what we want to do? We want to finish his work, don't we? So if we believe that we are sent of God, and our purpose and will is the will of God, do you think we will fulfill our purpose and his purpose for our lives? The focus is Jesus. That's where it needs to be. I want to turn you to Psalm 40. Psalm 40. And verse 8. Everybody there? It's nice to put things on the screen. And that's all well and good, but I like to hear those Bible pages turning. You know, when the Bible pages are turning, you're learning to find things in your Bible, right? And you've got the sword in your hand. And it's one thing to look it up on a phone, and that's your business. If you want to do that, that's great. But when you've got the sword in your hand, you know, there, there becomes a comfortableness. Something you can write on, you know, you can fight. I, you can see pages you can memorize things easier. You know, that's just my opinion. 
40 and verse 8. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Yea, thy law is what? Within, Within my heart. Within my heart. Within my heart. All right. I want you to turn to Matthew 5 and 17. Five and seventeen. I was looking at fifteen, seventeen, and I'm sitting there looking at it, thinking, "What in the world is that?" That's not what I wanted. Five and seventeen. All right. Think not that I'm come to destroy the law or the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to what? But to fulfill. What does fulfill mean? Because there's a lot of Christian churches out there. It means that means throw it away, right? Does Jesus mean he wants to throw away the law? No. What does fulfill mean? Complete. complete. To complete. See, there's been wonderful teaching that we've had here with Lowell and uh, about the Sabbath, about end time. The Bible, as you study the Bible, you'll find that it's all kinds of typologies. God has allowed us to see the future. He's told stories that tell us what is, what is going to happen. And uh, I, I'm not going to take the time to go into it, but I'm just going to kind of speak a little bit about Moses. You remember Moses and Aaron and how they had this big battle in Egypt about having, they wanted to go worship God, right? And what was his deal? What did he say? He says, we wanted to go, we wanted to go Sabbath. We wanted to go out and worship our God. And what did Pharaoh say? Oh, you're lazy. You're just not working enough. So what did he do? He charged that they're going to work on Sabbath. Right? Hmm. And then what happened? Took away the straw. Took away the straw. And they were told to still make the bricks, right? But, but what happened when the, he's... Pharaoh had taken away all the commandments of God, trying to make them work on the Sabbath, and they were just asking to go out and worship God. Play. The plagues began to fall. Right? Were God's people hurt by the plagues in any way? No. Not at all. Not a one of those plagues touched them, but they were all around them, weren't they? All the plagues. You think it's any different in the end? What what law is there left that they haven't destroyed of God's law? There's only one. And that's the Sabbath. And brothers and sisters, when those laws are passed, it's over. The plagues will fall. But God's people will not be harmed by it. That's a beautiful typology that God gave us way back in Moses' day. It showed us how it's going to end. Go study it for yourself. Don't take my word for anything. Look it up. We have a di divine certainty, brothers and sisters. Not a mere sympathy for those in the world or a kind disposition for the unfortunate. If we're doing that, then it's it's not of God. This isn't, this isn't just about feeling. We have got to know that we know the Lord is sending us. We have to have a close connection with Him. Amen. You know, He's not going to have casual contact. God is not for casual contact. He's for deep intimacy and he longs for that individually with each and every one of us and if we have that kind of intimacy we're going to know who we are and what our job is and like I said 12 people flip the world upside down look at this church there's way more than 12 New Saverna Beach could flip the world upside down. 
we have no idea that the power that God wants to give to us, if we are willing to seek Him first and drop all our ambitions or ambitions and whatnot. Um, let's turn to John 17, and I'm going to close up here. I may do two more verses, I don't know. John 17. Seventeen and eighteen. Seventeen and eighteen. You ready? Amen. John seventeen eighteen. As thou hast sent me into the world, what does it say? Amen. Even so have I also sent them into the world. Them is us, brothers and sisters. Hey, I want to read one more. Why not? We're right here in John. John 20. John 20. And 21. Then said Jesus to them, Plead, Peace be unto you, as the Father has sent me. What? Jesus was sent of God for a definitive work. And he's sending us for a definitive work. It is our job, brothers and sisters, to prepare the way of the Lord. Our closing song is 321. 321, My Jesus, I Love Thee.